let's get started. pieces cut, I got my front pieces cut, I've got my rails cut. Now I want to leave it looking kind of rough, but you don't want it to be so rough that it actually tracks dust. So I'm going to give it a light sanding. Some of these stamp marks that came on the wood, I'm going to leave them. I think they'll give it a little character. And then I'm going to experiment with stains. Of these just makes them look better when it hangs on the wall and no one will actually see it. Now 
I'm taking a board that's fairly straight. I'm going to clamp it to my workbench to help me keep this project square. Now lining up your ends, they should be identical. We'll help keep everything flush. The backboards. I'm just going to put a little glue up here on the ends. Now once all your glue is dried and nothing's falling off, there's going to be coffee cups hooked in front of this. So we want to give it a little extra support. Now of course pallet boards as we all know are nailed on. I actually managed to find some nails out to the right size. I don't use them that often. So we're going to start by securing the back and then uh, the front. Well, I've missed my marks. 
as far as where I wanted it, I didn't take into account uh, the overhang I have on the bottom side of it. But the bright side, I've got it going the right way. I wanted this to be the top. I'll erase them and then I'll go to staining it. Standing a pallet is a pain in the butt. A lot of cracks, crevices. Now I'm going to give it just a little bit to kind of cure out, dry up a little bit. It shouldn't take long. This wood's pretty dry. And uh, I'm going to stencil across the top of it and then start sealing it. I've tried several techniques of wrapping these around something so I can get a nice uniform bend. Sadly to say, the easiest way to bend a spoon is still by hand. I tried using my mind, it just it didn't work. Remember, you've got to come across the top of them yet to sink that screw in there. Now, once your stencils are properly in place, you can lightly thumbtack them to keep them secure. Now it brought my wife in on this one. The stenciling and craft paints are kind of her specialty. I think it just made the work turn out a lot better. And I got her in the shop finally. Oh well, it makes your video look bad. Well, I make mistakes all the time. How will I fix it? Water here in a second. Now cleaning craft paint really is not that difficult. A little water and a little patience and you can get it cleaned right up. If you still have a little that has seeped into the crevices, uh, Q-tip and some stain, we'll camouflage it. All right, now that the craft paint is dry, I can begin putting on my urethane coating. I want to use a heavy brush on urethane because this is rough wood and it will smooth it out and that'll help keep it from accumulating dust. But if you just brush urethane over craft paint, Especially when it's stenciled, you will get streaks and runs and it will get soft. So the trick I use to get around that is first I give a few coatings of a spray-on urethane or enamel. Let that dry, about two to three coats of it, lightly over the top. I never do a heavy one all at once. And then I can urethane the whole thing. But before we use this, I want to point out one thing you need to keep in mind. Now if you're like me and you use one of these to heat your shop, it's not a good idea this time of year to spray this indoors. These cans use the, the same thing that's in here as propellant. So make sure before you start spraying, you shut this off. 
Otherwise, your weekend pro project will probably lead up to a trip to the emergency room if you're lucky. Okay, with it laying flat like that, give that a little bit to dry and then add a couple more coats. Now that the stenciling has basically dried, I'm going to start on the bottom with the first coat of urethane, urethane the bottom, flipper, and do the front. These little triangles I tend to use only leave a little divot, won't hurt nothing happen in the back. First coat will go on and soak up pretty quickly and it will kind of slow down a little bit every coat thereafter. Usually three coats of urethane if you've got a nice warped surface that is beautiful. If this is a rough surface, I'm not sure how long it will take, but I know it will take longer between each coat. So I'll get started on that and I'll save you from watching that more part. Now after it's had a chance to set overnight, it's the urethane has dried real nicely. And I don't know if it's from using the craft paint before the stain was all the way dry or if it was a reaction to the enamel, but it kind of gave an aged look to the stenciling across the top of it. The next thing I've got to do, since I'm using spoons as hooks, I've got to find my pattern across here that I'm going to use, mark, and mount the spoons on it. Now I've been determined I can get three coffee cups across here. I'm going to mount two here and then three down here. Deciding where I want the spoons to be, I'm just going to line the top of them with the top of the wood and use an awl to make a little mark. outside in that way we've got just about the right amount of centering. And once I've got my outside centered, I know where to put my center on. make these holes just a bit bigger so they're easier to see. I drilled the holes in the spoon with a 1 8 bit. I use a two step down system. I step down two sizes on my pilot hole so I'm doing a 3 30 seconds. So in about the first 24 hours the urethane will still be tacky. I've already started screws through the spoons. Holding them secure, I just tighten them down. And purely for cosmetics, I line the screws up going the same direction. Well, there you have it. One coffee mug rack ready to go on the wall. That was a fairly simple project. It does seem kind of backwards to build a pallet instead of taking one apart. But if you need something that's a little lighter, well, a lot lighter, and hugs a little closer to the wall, you've got no choice. Now, the spoons on this, I think I simply went to Dollar General. 99 cents, you can get three of them. Now, it's important when you use repurposed wood, you save your ends to test your stains. I originally wanted a darker stain. I'm so glad I didn't do that. To give you an example, the same stain I used here is the exact same stain that's on this workbench. So you can see just how different woods and different environments affect things. But there it is. 
came off Pinterest. My wife showed it to me. Whoever originally designed it, they did an excellent job. Not quite my cup of tea, but there you go. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch. Please subscribe and feel free to leave any comments. Thank you.